morning to the Honorable Ministers of the Council, members of the media, online viewers, radio listeners via St. Martin Gov Radio 107.9, and respective radio stations island-wide. I'm Rolaika Roach, and welcome to the live Council of Ministers press briefing for today, Wednesday, April 24th, 2019. At this time, I invite the Prime Minister and Minister of General Affairs, the Honorable Leona Romeo Marlin, to address you. Prime Minister. Good morning to all, my colleagues, members of the press. Good morning, St. Martin. We have a few announcements this morning. On April 29th, 2019, St. Martin will be hosting the annual Kingdom Consultations on Foreign Affairs, COB. The meeting will include the Prime Minister of Aruba, the Honorable Evelyn Waver Cruz, Prime Minister of Curaçao, the Honorable Eugene Ruchenard, and the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Kingdom of the Netherlands, Mr. Steph Bloch. On the agenda for the COP meeting, a number of points will be discussed, including foreign policy priorities, Caribbean parts of the kingdom, geographical focus, regional integration relationships with the EU, so the um, post Cotonou and Brexit, small island development states, economic development, security, crime, and the external borders, EU sanctions, and implementation scenarios, and Venezuela. What will also be discussed is the US sanctions policy cooperation within the kingdom, disaster situations, disaster assistance by Bayzet, so um, foreign affairs, at evacuations via Aruba and Curacao, the Caribbean visa policy, Additionally, during the COB meeting, I will have the opportunity for bilateral meetings with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Kingdom of the Netherlands. The proposed agenda for the bilateral consists of discussions on preclearance, pre or US preclearance, international organizations, so the establishments of agreements and immunities, the Dutch and French relations, so the Q meetings on border negotiations and EU projects, disaster preparedness, visas, and sex workers. My second announcement is that as the government of St. Martin continues its quest to attain the 17 sustainable development goals since January 2019 and concluded in June 2019, there have been a number of visits to schools on the island to promote the SDGs. Teachers have been given an insight on the concept of sustainability and how they can implement and present all the SDG school materials to their students for all the subjects are related to their curriculum. Mrs. Luki Morales, Program Manager at the Department of Interior and Kingdom Relations, BAC, and Chairperson of the SDGs Think and Do Thanks, supported by Marcelia Henry, Secretary General of UNESCO, and a member of the SDGs Think and Do Thank, are visiting all primary and secondary schools to bring awareness to the school boards, principals, teachers, and relevant staff on the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. The objective of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development as it relates to St. Martin, and in particular to the educational sector, is the recognition of the themes and endorsement of the SDG themes which they can easily use to implement the 2030 agenda as part of the school curriculum to spread awareness on a student level. More information on the SDG-related activities will be given in future press briefings. And lastly, Carnival has begun, and unfortunately, there have been a number of scenarios, ser serious incidents already, and through this medium, I want to wish all the civil servants from the different ministries that are involved in keeping public order, safety, and responding to emergencies in one way or the other, much guidance and strength during this festive carnival period. To our residents and guests from far and near, I would like to take this opportunity to remind you to exercise caution and vigilance in order to ensure your safety and security as the 50th Golden Carnival is being celebrated. I thank you and I await your questions. Thank you, Prime Minister, for your opening remarks. At this time, I invite the Minister of Education, Culture, Youth and Sport, the Honorable Wyclef Smith, to address you. Minister Smith.
Thank you very much, Ms. Roach. Greetings to all gathered here this morning. Madam Prime Minister, honorable colleague ministers, the Department of Communications, members of the press, as well as those listening and viewing via radio, television, and or social media. Good morning, Sualiga. Happy National Administrative Professionals Day. The function of administrative professionals is in any organization, and especially in government, is one that is vital to the success of the entire operation. In this government administration building, you, civil servants and administrative assistants, are the connectors that get all the work processed for our great country, St. Martin. Therefore, on behalf of the ministry and all the citizens of this country, I would like to say a big thank you to all our secretaries, our receptionists, and administrative support staff for all the work that you do. I must make special mention of the Secretary of the Department of Education, Mrs. Kathleen Rooms Gibson. Her colleagues in that department came together to give her a special treat and token and that took place last Wednesday in anticipation of today's celebration. Kathleen, we appreciate you and all the hard work that you do for the department. A special thanks also to the secretary within my cabinet, Ms. Michinella Eugenio. The role you play is critical to the overall success of the cabinet, and I truly appreciate your efforts and the fact that you often go beyond the call of duty to ensure that I and the cabinet meet our deadlines and our commitments. To all of you, administrative assistants, enjoy your day. On the topic of cricket, Nathan Edward, Randall Longville, and Devanand Singh were the three St. Martin U15 cricketers who represented the Leeward Islands in the just concluded regional youth tournament. The young players finished the tournament in Antigua with remarkable performance. The Leeward Islands team had players from St. Martin, Antigua, Nevis, Montserrat, and St. Kitts. They all played well against their counterparts where Longville, as the wicket keeper, collected the most catches. Edward was the leading scorer for his team, while Singh joined them in the top five batsmen for the team. Last week, Wednesday, April 17th, the Ministry of Education, Culture, Youth, and Sport was in court once again with the Stichting Fortgezet Onderwijs Bovenwinse Eilanden, Swobe. Ever since the new subsidy system for schools was implemented, Swobe has contested it, stating that they are not receiving sufficient finances to cover the personnel and operational costs of their schools. The new system, which is called the lump sum system, was implemented in 2010 when St. Martin obtained country status. The lump sum system is a financial system that is less bureaucratic. As a result of the reduced bureaucracy and the additional freedom and flexibility that school boards, and in this case SFOBA has required, with regard to regards to the funds placed in its disposal, it is imperative that SFOBA provide proper accountability for the funds it receives. In order for the ministry to assess whether SFOBA has been spending the taxpayers' guilders in a correct and prudent manner, SFOBA is required to provide the ministry with a proper audit of its financial statements. Unfortunately, since 101010, SFOBA has not been able to provide the ministry with a proper audit of its financial statements over the past years, going back to 2010. In 2014, SFOBA took the ministry to court claiming that the lump sum subsidy was insufficient. The ministry did adjust the lump sum in favor of SFOBA, yet SFOBA still claims to have a shortfall. 
ever since discussions have been ongoing with Swobe concerning this matter. Actually, from the perspective of the ministry, the most recent discussions with Swobe regarding the lump sum were progressing in a very constructive manner. It therefore came as quite a surprise to be informed by the court that Svoboda had filed administrative injunction proceedings against the Minister of Education. Even though Svoboda has not objectively substantiated its claim that it continues to suffer a structural deficit, the Ministry was prepared to provide Svoboda an amount of 50,000 guilders monthly in addition to the significant amounts Svoboda already receives from the Ministry. For reasons unknown to the Ministry, Svoboda has failed to respond to this offer of 50,000 guilders additionally per month. Svoboda instead, without any previous announcement or warning, filed via court petition dated April 12, 2019, Administrative Injunction Proceedings. The hearing in, this, in these proceedings took place on Wednesday, April 17, 2019, before the court. Svoba claimed before the court that it currently suffers a liquidity deficit to such an extent that a real chance exists that bankruptcy would be sought. Svoba also stated verbally during the hearing that it will have to close its doors within the coming months due to an acute liquidity shortage. The ministry, on the other hand, emphasized that to date, Svoboda has failed to present audit reports. Svoboda has also not provided any bank statements nor a cash flow statement to the ministry, neither to the court to support its allegation that it is underfunded and that it would not be able to meet its financial obligations within the coming months to such an extent that it would have to cease operating. The judge subsequently, upon the request of the ministry, decided to suspend the hearing in the administrative injunction proceedings so that Svoboda can present the proper documentation as requested by the ministry in the form of bank statements and a cash flow statement in order for the ministry to be able to properly assess whether or not Svoboda finds itself in such a precarious financial situation that it would have to cease its operation within the coming months. Only after it has been determined on the basis of proper documentation that Svoboda is currently in an acute liquidity crisis will a decision be made by the ministry or by the court if additional monthly liquidity support to Svoboda is necessary. For more information about the case, I will hand out at the end of this press briefing a detailed statement so that the press can become acquainted with the other side of the story. Carnival. The 50th year of Carnival celebrations has officially been opened. As these festivities generate much economic activity and tourism, most of its governmental oversight comes from the Ministry of Tourism, Economic Affairs, Transport and Telecommunications, TIAT. However, Carnival is established as an aspect of our St. Martin culture, and for that reason, as Minister with responsibility for culture, I've worked with the Department of Culture to expand the cultural content of these celebrations. On Sunday, April 28th, the St. Martin Carnival Development Foundation, SCDF, will present the Children's Parade combined with a cultural parade supported by efforts of the Department of Culture. In past exploratory conversations with SCDF on ways in which there can be more collaboration between SCDF and the Department of Culture, it was decided that the department would expand the cultural presence in Carnival. This year, the collaboration has been broadened to include both a cultural parade and a cultural night showcase. The children's parade has been augmented to include a cultural presentation. It is important for us to showcase our heritage, 
during these weeks of festivities. And I look forward to the displays from all the participants in this cultural parade. To ensure that we all can enjoy the different events and activities planned, I encourage everyone to practice safety first. Wear seat belts while driving. Do not drive if you're under alcoholic influence. Be mindful of the age limit for events. And do not have minors exposed to adult activities. Parents, safeguard your children. Ensure that proper supervision is in place for all children whether at home, at the beach, or at the parade. And if you're unable to provide proper supervision during the various public events, then keep your children at home, and if necessary, stay at home with them also. A few weeks ago, I announced the completion of the installation of the four new light fixtures at the Raoul Illich Sports Complex which was, was funded by the International Olympic Committee and the Dutch government. This was the culmination of lengthy discussions and collaboration with the above mentioned entities, the St. Martin government, the National Sports Institute, the Netherlands Olympic Committee, Netherlands Sports Federation, and the Dutch Football Federation, which started back early in early 2018. On April 29th, representatives of the Netherlands Olympic Committee, the Netherlands Sports Federation, and the Dutch Football Federation will be on the island to symbolically turn on the recently installed lights at the Raoul Illich Sports Complex. The ceremony is expected to start at 6.30 p.m. and end at 7 p.m. on Monday April 29th. As previ previously stated, the lights at the Raoul Illich Sports Complex were funded by the International Olympic Committee, the Dutch government, and the Dutch government. However, besides the funding, we also received assistance from the Netherlands Olympic Co uh, Committee, the Netherlands Sports Federation, and logistics and engineering expertise from the Dutch Football Federation. As Minister of Education, Culture, Youth, and Sport, I would like to once again thank the International Olympic Committee, the Dutch government, the Netherlands Olympic Committee, the Netherlands Sports Federation, the Dutch Football Federation, and their assistances in making this possible. We would also like to thank the St. Martin Soccer Association for their assistance with the temporary lights at the Raoul Illich Sports Complex following the hurricane. The second Caribbean Ministerial School Safety Forum will be hosted by the Ministry of Education, Culture, the Ministry of Education, National Reconciliation, Ecclesiastical Affairs, and Information in St. Vincent and the Grenadines on the 29th and the 30th of April in Kingston. This forum will be organized by that ministry in close collaboration with the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency, SEDEMA, the United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund, UNICEF, the United Nations Office for Disaster Risk Reduction, the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, and the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, OECS. I have been invited to participate as a speaker to the session number four, entitled Policy Opportunities for Education Sector Resilience, Lessons from Recent Events. Along with me, two members of the ministry will also be attending this second Caribbean Ministerial School Safety Forum. They are the Secretary General, Secretary General of the Ministry of Education, Culture, Youth, and Sport, Mrs. Shemina Powell Richardson, and Mrs. Olga Mussington Service, Head of the Division of Student Support Services. Mrs. Mussington Service, um, she is the acting head of the local safety and emergency school 
uh, plan committee. Just want to say, remember, when we unite and work together and focus, together we will reset, rebuild, and restore our country, our region, and also our world. Thank you for watching and listening, and I'll be available for any questions that you may have. Do have a pleasant day. Thank you, Minister Smith, for your opening remarks. The Minister of Justice, the Honorable Cornelius De Weaver, and the Minister of Finance, the Honorable Barry Perry Hearlings, are both at the press briefing this morning, however, will not be making any opening statements. But they are both available for any questions the media may have. We now move on to the question and answer session. Stephen Cerulean of PJD2 Radio, you have the floor. Thank you, Ms. Roach. Ministers, Prime Minister, good morning. My question is for the Minister of ECYS. The lights at the Rahul Ilej were sponsored to the tune of how much? Well, thanks for the question, but I don't have the exact information or the exact figures at hand, and rather than give you an erroneous figure, I can get that to you later. Thank you, Minister Smith. Lyndon Brown of BCN TV, you have the floor. Good morning to the people of St. Martin and our ministers present today. Question to Minister De Weaver. Um, for years, the Dutch police officers, is a usual thing that they come to St. Martin to help. Um, at any time that the St. Martin government will pay their salary or their income, and if so be the case, um, it never happened. Why now there's a proposal for St. Martin to pay the Dutch officers? Thank you. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Uh, first of all, the Dutch police officers, KPN, they came after the hurricane. That was number one. Number two is they're going to be here until mid next year, and there are financial consequences for them being here, whether it's housing, PDMs, etc. We have a responsibility to also pick up part of that bill as well. Uh, it is 3.2 million euros that we have to make sure that we have on the budget to ensure that they're here. But I understand that the importance of them being here is not only to fill the capacity void that we may have, but also allows our police officers who are in training to complete their courses. We have three classes actually. Uh, the first BPO class should be finishing up in May, the next one in January, February next year, and then the third class will be six months after. So while they are here, the officers are able to study and get trained to be complete uh, BPO officers and higher. So it's actually a good thing for us and it does come with a price tag that we have to accept. Thank you. Thank you, Minister De Weaver. We now move on to the second round of questions. Stephen Cerulean, you have the floor. My question is for the Minister of Finance. Recently, uh, the Council of State was very critical of the CFT in the way that they have been, been handling the affairs of the islands. In fact, they are saying that CFT should be more um, proactive when it comes to issues such as poverty, socioeconomic development, government finances, and of course civil servants organizations. I'm sure you have taken note of that report. If you have, can you give us an idea as to how you feel about the issued report of the Council of State? Thank you, Stephen. Good morning to uh, my colleagues and to the press corps. Good morning to the people of St. Martin. Uh, thank you for the question. I think it's a very important question that you state here, but I, I would like to, to make sure that the context is uh, perceived correctly by the people. Um, where the Council of State is mentioning that the CFT should also look at uh, the social issues that we have, for instance, and, and uh, support NGOs to support them. The CFT by Kingdom Law on um, financial supervision does not directly uh, provide the possibilities for that body to do such because that's not their task. Their task is to supervise the financial 
um, uh, management uh, help us in that as well. What they are actually saying is that the CFT should be more proactive in the sense that look at the both countries, St. Martin and Curaçao, uh, how through their budgets they can create space in their budgets to also um, include helping out on those uh, facets in, in society. Um, what they're actually saying is, and that is what I have been saying even before I was a Minister of Finance, I think the CFT should not o only be a kind of a watchdog or our uh, uh, overseeing supervisory uh, accountant. Um, I think this, the CFT should also be there to, to um, support any government in um, creative ideas to solve problems. And that is something I find they, are, uh, they have been lacking for quite some time. Uh, in all honesty, I must say that lately they are trying to move into that direction. Uh, but it is, it is not easy so far for them to, to go all the way. Um, but also in their defense, I also must say that um, uh, give and take uh, some, some issues at time, but that's how it goes uh, uh, you know, in life in general. Uh, we have a very good working relationship with them. I have my, uh, my doubts on certain things, but that is not uh, uh, for, for this media um, to, to, to discuss. That's why you sit at the table and you discuss things. But I think that definitely it's about time that the CFT start working with governments and not only, you know, looking from top down and, you know, telling us uh, uh, this is not good and uh, this is the way. You have to be uh, supportive of us as well uh, because that is also, um, which I always find very important in the... the transfer of, of knowledge and experience should always be um, a factor in anything that we do with uh, uh, bodies like CFT or with consultants. We should learn and gain that experience as well. And that is exactly what I would like to see from the CFT. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Heerlings. Lyndon Brown, you have the floor. Question to Pri Prime Minister. Leon Marlin. Um, recent time, Minister, it was a um, year before um, the regatta, you mentioned on stage that um, St. Martin opened for business. Now uh, we are in high season, a lot of people visiting St. Martin, and there's still a crisis of um, hotel rooms. Um, do your, this government plan for a quick fix? I mean, meaning that where, when people come to the island, um, not only for carnival, but people are coming all the time so they can be accommodated somehow or the other. Thank you for that question. I, I would believe that um, indeed um, at the regatta, I said St. Martin is back open for business. And we can prove that because right even after the storm, for some reason, tourists continued to come even though we had a very low capacity of rooms, they were coming still and it has significantly increased. As you know, Maho is almost completed. Great Bay will start soon. We have the, the room capacity has increased. Carnival is here. We have a number of guests here. Opportunities have opened for persons who are exploring the possibilities of renting their own facilities, whether it's Airbnb and B. So people are being creative opportunities. They, they always state that in a disaster, in, a, in crises, there's also opportunities. So when it comes to accommodations, persons who are willing to come to St. Martin has found means to be here, and they will continue to do such until we reach our uh, capacity and more when it comes to room occupancy. I don't see it as a problem right now because if it was a problem, we would not have the numbers that we are having right now, and I'm waiting for the Minister of um, Tourism 
to give an update once the season is over to give the people an update as to how many guests came to St. Martin, how many persons stayed here on this island to celebrate the 50th um, carnival. And um, that will be very interesting. So indeed, your question is quite relevant because we, we do have some, some constraints, but that hasn't stopped the people. People have became creative. Our locals also became creative in ensuring that we have Airbnb. Some of the hotels are up and running, so people do have space. Thank you, Prime Minister. We now move on to the third round of questions. Stephen, you have the floor. Thank you. I'm going to generalize my question in the absence of the Minister of Health. Um, the recent announcement of the outbreak of measles in America. We are now celebrating our Carnival 50th anniversary. We know that Jamaica also reported a few cases. So was Guyana and Barbados. Um, has there been any discovery of measles on St. Martin? And if there has been, what has been done to safeguard the residents um, seeing the fact that we are going through the carnival festivities at this time? If I may, in the absence of Minister Lee, a uh, couple of things. Of course, we keep monitoring the situation with the measles. Uh, there have been no reports as far as we know to the council and the vaccination coverage of St. Martin has remained extremely high. Uh, that vaccine portion, vaccination program that we have has been maintained uh, throughout all the school years. So we are well vaccinated against it. So we do have certain resistance against anyone coming in. Uh, and, I, and because of the carnival season, we're not really worried about measles, but we're more worried about STDs. I think recently, or if not today, there is a article in the paper, you know, warning people to be careful to practice safe sex or abstain. So those are things that we kind of look at and we try to promote during this time of the year. Thank you. Thank you, Minister DeWeaver. Lyndon, you have the floor. Question to Minister Smith. Uh, Minister Smith, you will be going to St. Vincent and the Grenadines soon for consultation. And um, three items you highlight. Um, education and um, security and disaster. Um, are you seeing room for more cooperation with St. Martin and the Caribbean and the, and the region? Um, seeing that we are so close. And what will be your message to the, to the people um, in that, that delegation? Thank you very much for your question. Um, the whole objective of coming to get together as a Caribbean region because there will be ministers of education from the other countries in the Caribbean coming together to uh, share their, their plans and to exchange ideas as to how to make schools uh, more safe uh, during uh, those times and to prepare um, the staff and students um, how to deal with emergency situations, not only hurricanes, but also other natural disasters or man-made disasters. So that's what we will be doing. We'll be sharing, exchanging information, uh, best practices, and eventually out of this, the, there will be a regional uh, school safety plan framework that other countries can use to write or draft their, their own framework for their specific uh, country. So it, it's going to be very interesting and I hope that we'll be able to bring back a lot of information that we can use in order to complete because we did start here on St. Martin with a school safety and emergency uh, plan and so the information that we will get we hope we'll be able to um, improve our plans that we have here. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Smith. We now move on to the final round of questions. Stephen, you have the floor. Minister of ECYS, um, since 10, 10, 10 all ministers of culture have taken the opportunity to open the Carnival Village as um, they, they start their Carnival festivities. What was so obvious on Saturday was your absence. Firstly, why were you not present? Secondly, how many troops will be part of the cultural parade 
to be had on Sunday? Uh, the Department of Culture, they're still um, working th that out with the uh, schools and the various organizations that uh, fall in the culture. Uh, so th an exact number I would not be able to give you. The, in the past, indeed, um, ministers of, of culture uh, were present. Um, but if you would look at our budget and how, as I said earlier, the organization is set up, the uh, carnival is looked at more as an economic um, factor in our, in our society and falls under the um, ministry of TIA. You would notice also that the major subsidies to carnival come from the ministry of TIA. So the ministry minister of TIA was there, and he did the opening ceremonies. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Smith. Lyndon, you have the final question. Final question to Minister De Weaver. Minister De Weaver, often time um, when you do all you can, is it bothering sometimes? Um, now we are focusing on the prison, that um, you are busy working on to get the, the prison up to par. And who are responsible to leak out or to give information to the public? Because oftentimes you heard information um, via newspaper, radio. Uh, who are responsible to give these information? And um, lastly, can you give us an insider, insider of how the progress of the rebuilding, the rebuilding of the prison. Thank you, Mr. Brown, for your question. Uh, first of all, let me just say that we have an improvement plan that we are using to execute all the work that need to be done at all of our detention facilities, which includes the Miss Lally Center, the Simpson Bay holding area, the Phillipsburg holding area, and Point Blanche. We have been diligently working on this, uh, but we have to do it with priorities and we have to do it strategically. Um, you know, some people complain about the paint inside of the prison cells chipping off. But if you have a leak on the roof, then paint in the prison cell doesn't make any sense. So you have to fix the leak first. So we're strategically handling everything. And uh, I know it on the front page there is a letter from MP Tamara Leonard, which I think we should all embrace and accept it as it is. And she will receive an official reply once we officially get the letter as well, because I have not received it. Uh, but I will, of course, once it reaches my desk, we will prepare the replies to her and we'll share it with the public as well. You know, we just had the Minister Deckard here with State Secretary Knops. Uh, they also came with a very uh, different perspective. And once they got here and they saw what was done and they toured all the facilities, they left here with a whole different impression once they saw the reality of the improvements that have been made over the last six, seven, eight months that we've been doing. So I, of course, will encourage the MPs in general, because they have asked for a tour, to have that organized so that they, they can see firsthand what is happening in all of the facilities. And I embrace that because I think it's important to be informed and to always be willing to, to share information. Uh, you know, sometimes, I wonder if the information that I do give reaches the masses at times, and I, um, I think I have to do, maybe I have to do a little bit more in getting a message out there, because as many pictures as we've put out there about the cells, for example, in Phillipsburg, which were in a deplorable condition, and today are up to par that, you know, progress committees have checked it off and said, hey, great job. Yeah, there's still more I need to do to inform people. And we, as much as we like to do everything one time, it also costs a lot of money. Uh, the Minister of Finance can contest to that because I keep yanking on his um, chain for, for some more so that we can always you know, do more improvements. But you know, if you have a dollar, you can only spend it once. And if everybody has to get um, 14 cents out of it, then we have to make sure everybody gets 14 cents out of it. But we do have priorities, and we are following the improvement plan. Thank you. Thank you, Minister DeWeaver. Honorable Ministers of the Council, members of the media, 
Online viewers and radio listeners, this brings us to the end of the Live Council of Ministers press briefing for today, Wednesday, April 24th, 2019. For rebroadcast, tune in every evening at 7 p.m. on St. Martin Cable TV. For video on demand, log on to the official government's website at www.stmartingov.org. On behalf of the Department of Communication, I'm Rolika Roach, and do have a pleasant day further. <laughs>